Welcome to Sewing Class. I'm Annette Julie, and today we're going to be working on preparing our muslin for our hand sewing notebook. Here are some of the tools that you could use. So I've got an array of buttons here and different measuring instruments. You don't need everything, but you do need one type of shank button. And so a shank means having a little loop on the back of that button to be able to sew it. There's a little loop right there. This is a shank button. Here's another one with a loop. That's a much better example. Some vintage buttons. So you'll need one type of shank button. Then you're also going to need one type of sew through button. So here you see these are all shanks and then these are all sew throughs. So these are four hole sew throughs and then these are all two hole sew throughs. You can see in the middle of this little vintage button it's got the two holes. as well as that larger vintage button, the two holes. Those are both plastic. Here we've got the four hole sew through. Four hole sew through. Two hole sew through. Okay. So you need one of each. You'll need one type of ruler or a tape measure or a grid. You will need some hand sewing needles. These are a size seven, size seven hand sewing needles. And you'll need fabric scissors, and perhaps a snip for your threads or a seam ripper. I love these little snips. You'll need some pins. I love a pin magnet to hold everything together. And you're also going to need a hook. This is a larger one, so it's a little bit easier to sew. And an eye, and either one of these is gonna work this one or this one. Either one of those eyes work with the hook. Okay, now if you happen to have some beeswax, that's great because this is really nice to use with our thread. So you're going to need your thread and I love Guterman and if you have beeswax, great. So that's the tools you're going to need. And then you're going to also need some muslin cloth and an iron. Okay, little iron and little ironing board. I love this little portable one. It's just so easy to have around. Just half size. Okay, that's what we're going to need for our tools. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to prepare some muslin cloth. Let's move our tools aside. There's our little ironing board. Got some muslin. This is 100% cotton. Here's the selvage edge here. I have an iron that's hot. And it's also got some water in it, so it's providing some steam. And we're 
we're almost to the other side where we have the selvage edge again. And then this is a raw edge and I've ripped it. I snipped and ripped it all the way across so I could block the fabric and make swatches. So when you're starting with your muslin, if someone has cut the top edge up over here, Make sure you snip down one inch and you rip off a piece of muslin, the full width all the way across like I did with this piece here. I ripped this all the way across very quickly so that I can start with a good ripped edge. And then now we're going to measure down and get our swatches in order. First, we're going to need your writing implement. And we're going to make a variety of swatches. We need two 5 inch width by 7 inch length. We need four 7 inch width by 7 inch length. And we need six of a 4 inch width by 4 inch length. So first off, we're going to start by taking our muslin taking your measuring implement, your grid, your ruler, whatever you'd like to use and we're going to go ahead and measure down 7 inches and we're going to mark it. And we're going to snip it, snip it right through the selvage edge, and we're going to rip this very quickly all the way to the other side. Great. Now we have a 7 inch width that we can divide into smaller pieces. 7th inch length, excuse me, and we'll divide up the width. We also are going to need the 4 inch piece. So on the other end of my muslin, I already had ripped a small piece off. I'm going to use this side to prepare the 4 inch. There's my selvage edge. I need this to be four inches. I'm gonna measure down four inches on my selvage edge. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. I'm gonna snip in through the selvage edge. And I'm gonna rip quickly to the other side. Right now we have the four inch length. So let's start with the seven inch piece. With the seven inch piece, we're gonna need ones that are five inch wide as well as seven inch wide. So let's get our grid. I like working on that. I find that's really handy to work with. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now, since this is already 7 inches, I need to start making notation of things. I also need to cut that selvage edge off uh, and not use it as part of one of my swatches. That's very important. So with my list of swatches that I want to work on, 
I'm going to start with the five by sevens. So with the selvage edge, I'm going to go over a full inch, and this is about three eighths of an inch past the selvage edge. My selvage edge happens to be wide; it's about five eighths. So if you wanted to go even further, an uh, inch and an eighth, an inch and a quarter, and get away from that selvage edge, that always helps with sewing. Selvage edge can be tight and a pain in the butt to sew. Let's go ahead and mark an inch away <clears throat> from the selvage edge. Now we're going to mark over our width because this is the cross grain and this is the length grain parallel to the selvage edge is our length grain. We're going to go over five inches for our width on the cross grain and mark it. Now, I already have my first swatch ready to rip, but once you rip this off, you don't necessarily know which is the lengthwise grain. So you want to go ahead and put an arrow up and down both directions showing you this is a lengthwise grain. And we can also mark what the length and the width of the swatch is. So this is the five inch width by the seven inch length. That's one of our first swatches. But we don't just need one of that, we need two of it. So let's go over another five inches. And mark it. And I'm gonna go ahead and label it the same way with the arrows and the five by seven. Now we're going to continue on because we just completed the two five by sevens as far as the measuring goes. And we can start from this edge and we can add make the seven by sevens. So let's go over seven inches and mark. And since I still have my iron on, the rip edge that I'm working with is a little bit curly. So I'm going to go ahead and press it down so it's easier to draw on. And it doesn't have that curly edge. So I'm just pressing the edge I was marking on to make it easier to work with. Much better. Okay, nice and flat. This is a seven by seven. Marking over another seven inches. Add our arrows. This is seven by seven. And a seven by seven. So we have one, two, three, four of the seven by sevens. Two of the five by sevens. We're ready with that to start ripping in a second. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our four inch fabric, four inch on the length, and we're going to make it four inch on the width. I'm going to go ahead and press this flat too so my marking is easier to see and more visible to my students. Pressing both of the ripped edges. 
all these edges are ripped, you're not cutting them except for the snip at the top. So we just press that. And this is going to be the four by fours. And we need at least six of those for our buttons. And hook an eye. But you're not going to need the part next to the selvage again. So let's make sure that we mark in at least one inch. So this is beyond three eighths of an inch beyond my selvage. My selvage comes to right about there. And then now we start marking for the swatch, which we already have ripped at four inches on the length. Now we're doing four inches on the width. And we need six of these. Take your time measuring. Even if you have to do it twice. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Let's make one more line. We have six. Great. Now we need to go back and mark these. So we're going to put our arrows. And this is a four by four. Little arrow showing the lengthwise grain. Lengthwise grain is parallel to the selvage edge, which we're going to snip off because we don't use that for sewing most of the time. It is a little bit tight and can add puckering to a seam might be discolored or not even have the print on it 